Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, the setup is a little bit different today and that's because my brother's actually staying with us right now for the month of June while he's in between places and he's currently living in our living room on my couch. Because of that, I didn't kind of want to change his whole setup and ask him to vacate the place since he's working from there. So I decided to move back into the bedroom. If you guys have been watching me for, I guess, like more than a year now, then you will have remembered that this used to be a setup way back long before I had the whole couch outside in the living room. So this be a little bit nostalgic to you guys if you haven't seen the setup yet welcome to the bedroom this is one of the older backdrops that I used to have which was the bed frame so I don't think that this is the exact same setup as I used to have before and the setup may be a little bit different from what I had on the couch please bear with me guys you won't see too many videos filmed out here don't worry it'll be quick but I tried to make do with what I had possible so that it would work for everybody and I hope the acoustics is actually a little bit better in here I think there's a little bit more noise cancellation so should be a little bit more crisp but without further ado let's just jump right into today's video so for today's video we're going to be doing an updated house plan tour and I checked my channel and the last time I did one was way back in February and that was for a winter version so today we're going to be doing a spring update house plan tour there have been quite a few changes since the last time that I showed you guys all my plants and I'm gonna run through everything we now have a whole new vignette called the balcony if you guys follow me on Instagram then you will know that I've been doing weekly plant updates again taking it back on since last summer when I did it, you guys seem to really love it so I've been doing it again every Sunday on my Instagram story so you guys can check out there if you want to see more frequent and weekly updates as opposed to here on my YouTube channel because I think on here you only do it like once a season so like once every three or four months or so but if you want to see more frequent updates check out over there because that's where I will be doing it weekly and you can see exactly what's going on every single week when I get new plants when I get rid of old plants what plants have grown and have thrived so it's all there but we're going to be checking in with a plant update for spring and like I said we do have some new changes on the balcony you heard me we're finally putting that balcony to use guys previously I never really did much to it since we lived here we just like left it as a blank space and we always hated it because we thought that would have been way better if it was space for us indoors to use but now since the pandemic and we've kind of just been at home a lot more I've started to take on the project of sprucing up that balcony and I actually feel like I'm thriving in it now I've added so much more greenery to there not only are there decorative house plants but there are also some veggies and fruits on that space as well so we're going to be cultivating our own produce this year so excited and for the very first time I actually grew tomatoes from seeds not just seedlings straight from seeds we're gonna have some fresh produce that is grown from scratch this year so keep an eye out for that but first off we're gonna start in the bedroom there have been Quite a few changes in here I'm trying to decide if I want to bring the camera around with me to show you everything just because it's a little bit heavy and I think the last time I did it my hands got really tired by the end of it but then it was also really shaky so I'm not 100% sure how exactly I want to handle this I might actually just take the camera off the tripod with me and show you guys exactly what I have going on here we are going to start off with the very first plant actually I'm going to show you a couple of them that I can actually pull in before I have to start taking the camera off the mount and showing you the other ones so let's start with the very first one that's on Peter's side and I believe this is the bird's nest fern. This little guy also known as the crinkle fern has not been living the best life safe to say. I know that ferns are super super picky and they actually like to dry up a lot more frequently than I would love to admit that it gets but I have been trying my best to keep this guy fairly moist and humidified by placing him next to the humidifier, spritzing it regularly and also giving him a nice big drink of water whenever he looks like he's getting kind of dry but since then he has still kind of given up and some of the leaves have started to crinkle and dry up a little bit albeit there are still a lot of fresh baby leaves growing up from the center, so I think I'm doing a good job. I've had him for like a little over a year now, and he hasn't totally completely died on me compared to other plants, so pretty happy about that. This guy hasn't grown that much since the last time I showed you him. I think he has a couple of new baby shoes, but otherwise, he stayed pretty the same. I wish he could get a lot bigger. I've seen humongous versions of these at nurseries, and the leaves are like literally like this high, if not bigger, and I think you just really, really need a super humid space to be able to generate leaves of that height and stature unfortunately we live in a small condo in toronto and i don't want to check up my heat because it's not good for the space but he's thriving so far i think i'm just gonna leave him the way it is and just be happy with what i have so far i also have no idea how many plants i have exactly so i'm gonna keep count in one of these 
four corners here and by the end of it we'll be able to determine how many plants i have in this place hopefully it's a lot actually no hopefully for peter's sake it's not a lot because he always makes fun of me for buying new plants i hope it's not a lot i just hope it's enough next up in the bedroom is my marble queen pothos so i don't think i had this guy in my video last time i showed you guys my updated house plant tour but this is a pothos and i absolutely fell in love with this one because of the light green speckling for the leaves. Some of the leaves that have been growing out recently are actually like almost on the verge of being pretty white, I would say. I just love variegated leaves. If you guys can't tell from plants, I have a couple of them and I literally thrive in finding plants that look like this. If you guys remember last year, I accidentally got a golden pothos, which I kind of mixed up with this one and I thought I was getting this one and I got that one instead so it wasn't too happy. So I actually went out to one of the local nurseries and got a small pot of this one. I think this is like close to like three or four dollars for a very small pot they're very affordable but they're absolutely beautiful the foliage is like so nice and speckled and it looks like someone literally just spattered like white paint onto these leaves which i absolutely adore i cannot wait for this pothos to actually grow some more leaves and to slowly vine out and get nice and long i've seen some people's photos where their pothos has like literally like gone on for like probably four or five feet and it just looks really nice like being hung up all over the walls and draped all over the furniture and i aspire to have a pothos long enough to do that one day honestly even if it doesn't get along i just want to get long enough so i can like clip it and stick it back into the soil and make it look a lot more fuller and bushier but this is actually one of my few favorite plants that i really really love and i get super super sad if it ever dies luckily pothos are like fairly resilient plants and they don't really die that easily so i think i have my uh my work pretty laid out easily for me for this guy this one you guys know to be my pink princess philodendron this is one of the very first ones that i ever got no actually this is the second one that i got he used to actually sit outside in my living room but i've since actually moved it into the bed just because there's a lot of other plants going on in the living room right now and I actually had a little bit of space in here to put him so I've sat him here actually quite close to the window so he gets a lot of sunlight during the day hopefully this kind of pushes him to push out a lot more variegation in the leaves I've been getting a couple leaves that have some pink speckled throughout but overall it's just stay like really dark almost like a ZZ Raven color. As you can see here, there's like a little boo-boo on this end. And this actually happened because as I was tugging on the leaves when I was growing out, these leaves actually tend to get stuck in the previous stems that they're in. They can get really wrinkled and damaged. So as I was pulling it out, it actually completely fell off and broke off. Oopsie, so I damaged it more than it would have damaged by itself, which is why it's kind of like all on its lonesome some here with no leaf on it but it unwrinkled itself so now it's good it's pushed out a brand new leaf and this current leaf is pushing out another one as well hopefully by the time i come back and show you guys what this plant looks like in like the end of summer it will have grown quite a few more leaves and gotten significantly bigger i've actually had a lot of i would say not success but like satisfaction out of growing this plant because it was one of the first few plants that i got earlier last year when i first started getting really really into plants and i've seen it grown and sprout so many leaves that it just feels like a very nice sense of satisfaction knowing that I did that I made that thing grow and I nourished it and it loved me so put up new leaves but yeah this is the next guy the other one is currently sitting still outside in the living room so I will take you guys out there when we're done with the plants in here I think this is the point where I take you guys off of the tripod just because the other plants are starting to get a little bit bigger in their pots and I don't think I'm gonna be able to carry them over into the bed without making a huge mess or dropping them so let's just go take a look at the plants close up next up is this monstera he's not doing too well right now actually because I do actually need to water him which is why you guys see a couple of droopy leaves at the bottom but since the last time you saw him I think he's pushed out at least one brand new leaf I'm waiting for him to push out a couple more for the summer he should grow a couple more in this season it's supposed to be growing season for him so I don't know why he's growing so slow I've actually deduced that he may be quite pot bound with the roots and there's too many of them because aerial roots are actually getting little crazy see all these roots they go way beyond my side table and like almost touch the floor so I think I might have to snip them and repot him into a bigger pot in the meantime time though the leaves are coming in really nicely and beautifully and there's like massive fenestration so I'm super happy with that I'm actually excited for the day when he finally gets fenestration windows which are the little holes inside the leaf like a second set of holes instead of just like the exterior gashes on the edges and that'll just make me a very happy plant mom here's an example of root that's like going all the way down see that it's getting real long but behind it is actually the next plant i wanted to talk to you guys about i'm sorry for the root that's like clearly in the way of the video but this is my baby little fiddle leaf fig tree as you guys know last year i had a really big one and then recently i got this one as kind of like a cutting from somebody off of buns unfortunately this guy has not given me any new leaves recently he's kind of stayed stagnant like this but i'm glad that none of the leaves are dropping which was a huge issue I had with my other fiddle leaf fig tree so I'm happy for the way he is right now and if he doesn't want to grow any more leaves totally okay with that as long as he stays the way he does and just 
doesn't drop more leaves off because I think I'll be really really traumatized if he just continues to die because he'll just like prove to me that I am not meant to be a fiddle leaf fig tree mom. Next up is my spider plant. This is one of the two that I have. This one is getting quite large and over the past few months or so it has slowly started to spawn out these babies which you will see dangling down off the side of the pot. I've actually already given away a few of them to some other residents in my building because it was just growing way too big for the bedroom and getting everywhere. I've been trying to kind of not prune, but cut back on how many babies that it's sprouting out. I'm hoping that it doesn't continue to sprout more babies, but if you look closely, this stem right here that's coming off of it right now has a ton of little sprouts coming off. So I can definitely foresee it getting nice and large and bushy by the end of the growing season. And this guy is just definitely gonna need to have lots of babies trimmed off. In the meantime, I'm just gonna trade them off and we've actually just been trading them for beers and wine in the building which I'm sure Peter is happy about because that just means more beer for him but I'm happy at the same time because that means this plant is getting a little bit smaller in a way that I can handle without having to cut off the leaves directly okay and now moving on to the plant that's directly in the middle right here as you guys can see I have the Dyson sitting next to it and this just goes off on its own whenever necessary to kind of give all my plants like a boost of humidity but this is my variegated rubber fig tree and I love this guy so much if you remember what he looked like last year when I first got him he was significantly smaller. He also did have four stems though, and one of the stems has recently died and now there's only three. But regardless, I'm very happy with him. He continues to spew lots of beautiful leaves all the time. And I think there are currently two brand new leaves that are opening up that I can show you guys. This little guy right here is currently in the process of unfurling. I'm not gonna touch it because I don't wanna damage it. Learned my lesson from damaging too many leaves, but I just love the beautiful variegation in these leaves and like the contrast between the pink and the green. It just looks like, so pixelated, even where it, the green transitions to like a lighter green as well. It's one of the most beautiful plants that I have. Like I said, guys, I love variegated plants. So this one gives me a lot of joy. Also added to the fact that it's a little bit pink. I think that's kind of cute and gives it like an extra edge over the other plants that are just green. Next up is another one of my favorite plants. And this is once again, another variegated one. This is my tree star stromanth. As you guys can see, there's quite a bit of pink on these leaves, lots of green. I know last year he was not doing the best and a lot of the leaves were dying, particularly the ones that had a lot of variegation. But since then, I've actually put him on a fairly decent watering, I guess, schedule, you would say, but he's been fairly humid. I also shifted him down a little bit lower so he'd get less sun. It's more like indirect this way. When I had him higher directly above here where the window sits, it was starting to fry awesome leaves I felt like so this way he still gets sun but not too much I would fry the leaves and he's been actually thriving pretty well since I would say I think he's almost recovered like 75% of what he looked like before I started killing him by accident so quite happy with this one next up is my string of hearts I know last year I had a variegated version and it died because a bunch of mealybugs attacked it afterwards I decided I really liked the plant and I wanted to get a new one and I got the regular version and it has grown so much now when I'm saying a lot I mean this guy look at how far he's getting right now he's almost slowly climbing his way underneath this little burlap sack over here when I got it it was literally like a third of this length so he seems to be pretty happy sitting here on my windowsill I'm gonna have to slowly move him back further and further every single time because I don't know what I'm going to do with him since he keeps growing so long. Otherwise, my other option is to cut it in half and actually to bury the ends back into the soil and make it a lot bushier. But he's been thriving out here and it seems like all the plants that are living in my bedroom at the moment are pretty happy with their status and their situation. So moving out into the living room area, this is where the majority of my plants in the house are being kept. And you guys are probably wondering what the hell this thing is because I've never showed them to you before. But this is actually a Meyer lemon tree, which means it grows little baby lemons. I don't know how close I'll be able to get without my camera focusing properly. See these flowers at the ends? Inside the bud is a little lemon and I'll show you guys probably later on in the season once it starts to bud and put out some more baby lemons. Now, the reason he's actually sitting here is because the other day I just found some mealy bug on it, which is why there are Q-tips and alcohol sitting next to it. I'm currently monitoring and making sure that it doesn't get another infestation and it doesn't spread to the rest of my plants because that would literally be the end of this guy. If he spread mealy bugs to the rest of my plants, it would not be happy. So he's just sitting here content right now, getting a little bit of sun next to the mirror, reflecting a little bit more sun off the back of him. And I think he's actually gonna stay here for the next two, three weeks or so until I have totally cleared and and it determined that he is not mealy bug infested and safe to return back to the wild with the rest of the plants. But it's my Meyer lemon plant. The hopes is that this guy will eventually get big enough so that when Peter and I buy a house, we can plant him directly into the ground and have a lot more soil. At the moment, he's still staying in his nursery pot, but I do plan on eventually moving him over to an actual proper pot of his own so he has some more soil for the roots to grow into. This is my monster Adansonii that I recently repotted about a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, he's quite leggy. I think when he was in the water just for the, all that time he wasn't getting the nutrients that he really needed to thrive so I transported him over into soil and since then he's 
been thriving like crazy. I'm gonna up close to show you guys how much growth he's had. This particular stem right here, I think we have a total of three stems. This one is a brand new leaf up top here. It is quite big. The one that's coming out of also is a brand new leaf right over there as well. And I foresee a new leaf coming out of this stem quite soon. This little leaf over here is also a brand new one that just, I think, unfurled literally like last week. It's quite big for the regular plant leaves that I was putting out originally. It's also this one that's growing out. The one in the back though is not doing too well. I'm gonna cut him. He's one of the older ones that I think had root rot on it. So once all the leaves are completely unfurled and it has enough space to photosynthesize, I'm gonna cut him off so that he doesn't continue to waste energy on the plant. The third and last final stem has been putting out leaves like crazy. Like this is brand new. This is also brand new. And the one underneath it is like also brand new as well. Camera does not want to focus. I apologize guys, but he's been doing quite well. My goal with this one is to eventually grow him long enough so that I can snip some of the leaves off or stems and put it back into the soil to make it nice and luscious. But that'll be a ways away. This one is also a brand new addition to the plant family. This is a monster at Insonii. As you can see, it's a lot bigger than the other one and a lot holier. I recently just got this one when I visited Vandermeer Nurseries with my mom. It's actually in Oshawa, so a little bit farther away from Toronto. We never really head in that direction unless we're going back home to Ottawa. So usually the nursery we go to is Valley View, but my mom really likes to add Insonii and she grabbed a couple and she actually gave me one of them. I know some of the leaves look like they're very wrinkled and dried up right now, but they're actually just like in the process of unfurling. Once they unfurl, the leaves actually end up looking huge humongous and beautiful just like this so i'm just waiting for a couple more to unfurl before i hang it up currently right now i have no idea where i want to put this guy so he's just kind of migrating from place to place in our condo and it comes with a hook so i don't know where i want to hang it up since we don't really have a lot of spaces to hang up i'm just resting him in its pot for the time being until we figure out exactly where we want to put him love him to death i think it's beautiful and i hope that the other adansonii that i am currently growing from the cuttings will eventually look like this one day with lots of nourishment and love you guys may recognize this one this is my Calathea white fusion for the longest time he was thriving he put out a bunch of brand new leaves from that singular shoot i think like almost eight leaves on its own and then out of nowhere one day it just decided to die on me i have no idea what's been going on i couldn't find any sort of like pests or mites on it it just seemed like it just didn't want to thrive anymore and from the looks of it clathias do not like my place because i think i just don't get enough humidity for them so they just kind of like come home to die with me he's kind of just sitting here right now i literally saved him so that i can do this updated house plan tour with you guys but other than that i'm literally gonna throw him out after this because he's not doing well this here is my spider plant as you can see he is quite big this is one of the other ones that i had that my cousin gave to me a long time ago last year i had a massive growth spurt and put out a bunch of leaves and it had just started recently to have more leaves this year for like i guess this year's growth spurt it's quite crazy i've chopped off quite a few of the babies since then and trade them off to people in my building for beer instead so that we can actually consume stuff instead of just have babies drag everywhere and i recently put it into this brand new rattan planter that i got from home sense because i really needed to elevate it off of the floor since the babies were literally dragging everywhere like these little guys would get stuck on the floor whenever I was doing stuff and cleaning things around the house and then I just ended up ripping them off and I felt so bad so I wanted to elevate it off so that they could dangle without interfering with the rest of my life but he's quite happy sitting here directly in front of the sun and now that he's raised up I think he gets a lot more sun exposure and it seems like from the growth rates he prefers that. Over here is my Transcendencia. I don't actually know the full name for this guy but he got really big. If you guys may have watched my Instagram stories then you will know that I actually repotted this guy into a bigger pot recently because he was outgrowing the pre teeny tiny one that I had previously and I also had a bunch of like pups shooting out of the base as well So I had to get rid of those and give them new pots on their own since then He's kind of recovered from the shock of being repotted I think when I first had him originally he was growing really quickly out of the other pot and it started to spiral out of control And the weight of the plant itself caused it to kind of topple over So since then it looks like he's recovering because now the main stem of the plant is slowly starting to grow upwards a little bit And more upright and look a little bit more appropriate So hopefully with time once it gets a little bit taller I'll stake the plant to the soil with like a chopstick or something to guide it a little bit so it can continue to grow upright not topple over as much because i do not need this plant to fall over and break because it's actually surprisingly heavy for how small it looks like these leaves are really really thick and he is currently here just sitting in front of the tv getting a water because no one's really using the tv right now over here on this side next to him and also in front of the tv is my pink princess philodendron this one is actually the very first one that i ever got also had a very slight like little whoopsie right here with this leaf this one also fell off in the process of me extricating it from a previous stem that it was stuck growing out of but since then he has definitely recovered. I think it has two new leaves. There is one right here and then another one right here. This one had a lot, a lot of variegation in it. I was quite happy about that. I want to see more pink, so hopefully the new ones come out. A lot more pink in the leaves. Since then though, he is starting to put out another leaf at the top right here. So I'm expecting this guy to fully come out within like the next week or so. And you'll probably see by the next houseplant tour how big it gets. But he's just also currently here getting a nice little bath as well. And then directly next to it is the golden pothos. I originally thought 
thought that when I was trading stuff for this guy that it was actually going to be the Marble Queen. So you can see why I was a little bit sad when it turned out to be more yellow speckled. It's more yellow than it is white and the Marble Queen definitely has a lot more of like a white type of speckling inside of it and it's a lot more kind of like dotted whereas this one kind of seems like paintbrush strokes. I don't know it's it's really hard to explain what it looks like unless you guys see the two of them up close together. I have actually recently repotted this guy. It used to be just stems and water as I was propagating them from the trade but I think that it started to like stunt its growth that it was only using water for so long to survive and it definitely needed a lot more nutrients so I planted it into soil and since then it has pushed out two brand new leaves which are these two guys at the very end of the base over here. As you can see these ones are a little bit bigger than the previous leaves that it was coming out of which means he's quite happy with the nutrients level that are in the soil right now. This is a brand new leaf that's currently pushing out and going to unfurl within the next week as well. Very very happy with how this one's progressing along with and I think eventually I may actually just trim the vine and repot it back into the plant here just to make the base a lot bushier because right now it just seems super stringy and leggy and I don't really love that look but I'm just putting up with it right now so it can grow satisfactorily without feeling like it's been used and abused. There's actually a second stem up here as well. I don't know if you guys can tell. There are two separate stems in this plant. They are not connected. So there's one big one right here and this is the second one where the two leaves are growing out of. Unfortunately, this guy seems to have some sort of fungal infection on in the leaves and it has not put out any new leaves since I repotted it. So I'm going to keep watch on it over the next month or so. And if he doesn't put out any new leaves, I'm going to have to completely uproot that stem and toss it out because it doesn't seem like it's healthy. This one is also a brand new acquisition that I just got recently and this is a eucalyptus plant. I brought it over from the TV because it's so small. The leaves are so dainty that I was worried that you guys wouldn't be able to see it up close and in focus in person. So I brought it actually over here a little bit closer to the window so you can see. Quite small right now. If I put my hand next to it, you'll see just how small it is. Quite a ways to go. It's definitely not a tree by any sort or any means just quite yet. But I'm hoping that with a lot of sun and humidity, he will eventually grow nice and big. Hopefully by next spring, I'll be able to repot him in a nice bigger plant. But he's just sitting here in its nursery pot in this temporary position. Once again, I haven't quite figured out where exactly I want to put him similar to like some of my other new plants. It usually takes me a couple of months to really figure out where each plant goes in my space. So once I have it figured out, I'll show you guys in the next video where he's going to sit permanently. But for now, he's just chilling in front of the TV getting a nice sun bath. I also had to trim off a couple leaves earlier this year, primarily just because he was starting to wilt some of them and wasn't happy with me. So yeah, he's only got four leaves right now. I'm hoping that I can get in at least one or two more leaves before the end of the growing season because it would kind of be a pain if he didn't grow anything during prime growing season to stay stagnant. Sorry for him to see if Kobe gets into the footage here. He's just kind of next to me right now and I can't really do anything about it. This is my Raven ZZ. I've actually been hunting down one of these for the longest time ever and then Valley View just recently had a bunch of them so I grabbed one for myself and a couple for my mom and my aunt as well. As you can see here this new growth here is quite bright and green right now but they actually grow in really green and eventually they fade to become this like beautiful dark black color. I'll show you what it looks like because the tips are slowly actually starting to turn turn black so you can kind of see the transition a little bit better here. My lens just like does not want to focus with me today. You guys see the tips? They're slowly getting black. I've read that it takes anywhere from three weeks up to six months for the stem to fully darken but I'm actually looking forward to it getting dark and matching the rest of the plant. My mom likes how it looks black and green at the same time. I'm not a fan of that. I just want the whole plant to look black because I think that looks pretty cool but very excited for this brand new addition to my plant collection. This one's kind of a tricky one for me to show you guys because it's going to topple over if I remove it. Sitting right here at the base is my Raphidophora tetrasperma and this is essentially what people call mini monsters. So if you look at the leaf right here it kind of looks like a monstera but a miniature version of it. They have a lot a lot of fenestrations in the leaves. They like to put out a lot of holes but the leaves don't really get much bigger than this and they stay kind of like the size for the entire lifespan of the plant. They actually do vine quite well as well which is why I said that it would topple over. There's currently a stick going up the side of it that's currently training the plant to grow up nice and tall and they grow up all the way up to here so far. I actually I had to buy a brand new stick that's even taller. I think it's about like eight feet because the current ones only go to about I think four feet and they're definitely not tall enough for the plant anymore and if I want this plant to grow up nice and straight I need to guide it. So there's two here side by side next to each other. They're fairly heavy and easily toppleable which is why I'm not gonna really touch them but except for these guys. They grow so quickly for anybody out there who likes a plant that grows fast and see satisfaction of growing plants quickly, I would highly recommend getting your hands on one of these ones if you can, just because they actually grow so quickly like a weed that you start to feel a lot of satisfaction from being able to raise this plant into a nice big one. This is one of the newer additions to my plant family from a couple of months ago. I don't exactly remember what this is called, but I believe it is a peperomia. And I primarily was drawn to this one due to the beautiful speckles on the leaves. Once again, it kind of looks like paint has just been splattered directly onto it. And I think it just looks so artistic and beautiful. It literally looks like a work 
work of art, which is why I was drawn to it. Interestingly enough, it has this like really dark one at the back here. I don't know what the heck is happening with this little guy. He just grew in like super dark and you got these like really white ones over here and you got these more greener ones there. When I actually first got this, it was like a really low lying plant to the top of the planter and wasn't that tall. But since then, after giving it a lot of like light exposure and humidity and moisture, it's grown actually quite tall and some of the baby stems on the inside have actually shot out as well. Here's like a closer up look of what the insides look like. They're nice and tall there. I don't have much experience with this plant, so I don't know what to expect exactly as it gets more mature, but hopefully it'll eventually spread out and start to like create more of like an umbrella foliage and just like spill over the planter and cover it a little bit more. I think that'd be really cute. So if we spin over to the window on this side, you can see I have a couple of plants that are not doing the best, but they're kind of still chilling out here. As per usual in the back, this is the calamandan tree. I really pruned it back quite a bit this year because I felt that the leaves were not doing well. It seemed like it was getting a spider mite infestation all over again and it wasn't budding any new flowers for fruiting purposes so I chopped them all off. Last time I did this it actually forced it to grow a lot of brand new leaves so I'm hoping that as I'm doing this now it'll be able to push out and shoot some more leaves out. Honestly by the end of the season if it doesn't regrow then I might just like scrap it completely because I don't think he's happy with this face here and I think it might also have some sort of root infection because I don't see spider mites on the surface but the leaves continue to be damaged so it might just be something at the roots that are causing this. At the back here sitting along the window is my Hoya Compacta. If you guys remember this guy had a serious serious spider mite mealybug infestation last year. I actually spent so much time cleaning it out and rehabilitating it and now it is fully happy and growing, albeit like super slow. I don't know what it is about this plant, but it just likes to grow at its own slow little pace. Super hydrated right now, which is why it's just sitting here in the sun. Because these guys are kind of more like succulents, it doesn't take that much water. So he just sits here and I water him like once a month and he's pretty happy. I did say that I have some vegetables. So these are the ones that I've kind of been saving from my kitchen. As you guys can see, I have a giant leek. This one I honestly just regrew for fun. I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do with it. It's getting quite tall now and it's actually developed this like strange little bulb at the top here. I don't know what this is. If anybody knows what this is, please tell me. It was just like chop this off and replant this in the ground. Is this just like it regrowing itself to like propagate new babies? So confused. But it has grown quite long since I got him and I do need to kind of like take him out of the water and use him with something. So I may whip up some sort of soup with the leek in it eventually. I don't really eat leek that often, but it seems to be thriving. So this was a fun little experiment for me. Directly next to it are all of my green onions as well. We actually use green onion quite frequently in our cooking so I've been reusing all the little shoot set that I get from whenever we're cooking anything and like putting them back in the water to grow them. It usually gives me about like one to two more lives of the green onion before the base just kind of like rots and needs to be thrown out but because of that it has kind of cut down on how much green onion we've had to purchase at the grocery store which is super helpful. Any way you can like always cut down on your spending is great. Directly over here is a bok choy which was doing well until I forgot to rewater a few days ago so unfortunately this one's gonna go in the garbage. This is more of like a little science test experiment just to see how it would thrive and it definitely did regrow but I think it would have done way better if I plopped it straight into soil. I don't think water was enough to really produce a lot of growth on it so I had fun while it lasted. I honestly don't eat bok choy that frequently either so I'm, I'm totally okay with just going to the grocery store and some buying some new ones. We are also now heading outside. I apologize if the audio is not as good as it used to be before. I do compete with a lot of street traffic so I'll try my best to make this as clear as possible for you guys but I will try my best to kind of improve the audio as much as I can so that you guys can hear clearly what I'm saying. This is our current patio situation and all the plants that I have out here. Like I said, I've done a lot of changes to the patio since you guys probably thought last. If you guys have been watching any of my videos on my channel thus far, you will have seen some of it, but this is usually what it looks like. And then whenever I film videos, I just move a lot of the stuff that's on the floor out of the way so that I have more space to film things out here. First things first, my bird of paradise. So I brought this guy out here onto the balcony like a month ago, I would say, and he's been thriving in the heat, doing really well, enjoying it, growing some brand new leaves. But at the same time, I accidentally sunburned him. So as you can see here on the leaves, they are fairly sunburned, which means that I left them out in the sun for too long, too quickly, albeit at the same time, there is that brand new growth that I showed you guys last time, if you watch my stories, and it is doing quite well. So I think this brand new shoot right here is enjoying the humidity in the sun out here and taking its I don't know, like just enjoying its fruits of labor of putting out this leaf. So I can't wait to see what it looks like once it unravels. It's going to be quite big. It's currently growing out of the leaf that was sunburned. So I'm hoping that that doesn't damage its chances of getting a nice healthy leaf growth. I just hope that he's going to take all the energy and grow nice and big instead. But I've been happy with him so far. And I think he's been like kind of enjoying the heat out here. So I'm going to leave him out here a little bit longer. I did reposition him though so that he's more out of the sun now and closer in to the wall where there's more shade so that he gets a little bit more protection. Speaking of sunburned plants, I also have one of my other raptor forts 
Tetrasperma sitting out here on the balcony. And as you guys can see, if we get nice close up to this leaf specifically, he is hella sunburnt as well. This is not a variegated one. I wish I had some sort of variegated Raffid Overheart Tetrasperma. I don't think they exist in North America or if they even exist at all. Unfortunately, this guy, I also left him in the sun for way too long, so he's nice and sunburnt. Luckily, the ones at the top are pretty okay. He seems to also really been enjoying all of the heat out here and putting out like thick luscious leaves i think all three of these ones including that little one that's trying to bud right now are brand new leaves since i moved him out so he's been pretty happy out here i have placed him back in the shade so it's not damaged by the sun and i'm hoping that over time one summer's over and i have to rewinter him back inside he'll be nice and happy and we'll have a lot more growth compared to the other ones directly behind it is this little bush here called the ficus starlight so it's part of the ficus family and i actually got him because i've been seeing these bushes everywhere in our neighborhood and i really love it so i wanted to get this in order to kind of like nourish it on our patio in hopes that eventually when we get a house one day it'll get nice and big and I can just like transplant it over to there. He's been pretty okay so far. I mean it doesn't look like he's getting much bigger or much smaller or shedding anything. Gets some moderate sunlight throughout the day so he's just kind of been sitting here and acts as kind of like a filler plant in this whole overall vignette of our balcony space. And then directly over here are actually two hibiscus plants. So there's a story that goes with these two. I actually went to Valley View looking for a rose bush and these ones said Rose of Sharon on the tag. So I didn't do a lot of reading and I misunderstood that as a rose. Unfortunately, that is not a rose. It is just the name of a type of hibiscus. Luckily, these things grow very like upright and straight, which is what I was looking for. I didn't want something that was like overly bushy or like a huge tree that would topple over. So I'm quite happy with them. They're going to act more as kind of like shader plants and they provide a lot of shade once they get a little bit taller. When I first got them, they were literally bare empty stems. So I'm quite happy that since then, the stems have like grown a lot of leaves and bush up quite a bit and start to fill in a little bit more space. They enjoy lots of shade and sun at the same time. So our balcony gets quite a bit of sunlight. I would say like six hours of direct sunlight before it reverts over to shade. It's like only 6 p.m. right now. It's already shady here because the sunlight falls behind our building, but these guys seem pretty okay. They're still growing, getting nice and tall. A couple of inches towards the top are a fresh growth from when we first bought it. They seem to be doing happily out here. Going directly in front of them are my two strawberry plants. So I had these two guys right here. I've never grown strawberries before, but I've been told by a lot of people that they're fairly easy to grow. The guy on the left really needs a little bit more watering because it's getting kind of droopy. The one on the right seems to be thriving right now. I'm gonna have to like start watering this guy as soon as I'm done this video. We are just about to harvest some strawberries. So let me show you up close what some of them look like. Hope you guys can see we have some strawberries that are kind of deformed but that's what you get from like non-pesticide plants there hasn't been any sort of crazy fertilizer that are put into them so i'm quite happy with that we have a couple strawberries a couple more buds are growing soon eventually this guy has a few down here i can't get the camera that low to show them to you they seem to be quite happy and thriving and putting out new flowers so i'm hoping that means lots of strawberries for us this summer because strawberries are one of my favorite fruits to eat in the summertime and then directly over to this side are my tomato plants if you guys didn't know i love growing tomatoes last year in the year before I actually grew tomatoes from seedlings so this year I decided to give my hand a go at actually growing tomatoes from seed fortunately and also unfortunately they all more or less took off and grew like crazy so I have like 24 some plants right now way more than I need to be honest so I'm probably gonna give quite a few away to my family and to people in our building I only really just need a couple to really put me through the summertime these are gonna grow so quick and so fast I think each little circle of these this is what the plants are in right now if you guys can see them have like three or four three or four is more than enough for me and I have about like seven rounds of these little pots here so I'm gonna be giving them away otherwise they're gonna take over my whole balcony I'm gonna have like literally no space to sit but they're very happy and healthy right now and I can't wait for them to get a little bit bigger for me to transplant them into the proper planter excuse me if you guys can see my nasty feet over here are my veggie planters as you can see the top row all along the top are my pepper plants i have a variety of like green red and cubanelle peppers i honestly don't know what's what right now just because i mixed them all up but some of them are doing a little bit better than others and starting to produce pepper babies i guess like pepperettes pepper flowers eventually they'll have some fruit growing out of them these ones over here i think are my largest plants out of all of them i would say yeah they look like they're the largest ones i'll get up close and show you guys what they look like when they start to have some flowers growing in them. i don't know if you guys can see but in the center of the screen right here are these two little flowers that are kind of leaning over there they haven't flowered just quite yet but as they're leaning over it means they're getting ready to bloom eventually and then once the blooms are finished inside will remain is a baby pepper and eventually grow quite big i kind of experimented a little bit and 
prune some of these and then didn't prune some of them just to see what the effect of pruning would have on them because I've been watching some videos on YouTube saying that pruning them would actually lead to more yield and would protect the height of the plant so it wouldn't get too tall and bushy and fall over. So we're going to see how they do. These two plants here, the ones that were like the biggest ones out of all of them, I actually did not prune. These were the ones that I decided to leave as is and I think that helped to like kind of accelerate its growth a little bit whereas say for example this guy I did prune. It's a little bit smaller but it is also growing. I think pruning it definitely shocked the plant a little bit. But then you also have like these plants right here which I also did prune and they're quite quick to grow so I think it just depends on the plant and how it wants to grow but we have lots of pepper this season for sure and then directly over here we also have some more veggies these are my broccoli I've never grown broccoli before I had zero intention of growing broccoli but we were at Freshco and found some baby plants and they were selling broccoli and I figured why not try my hand at it just to see how it looks and how it grows afterwards. I love eating broccoli so if I can grow some broccoli heads all to myself that'd be really cool. I think that these planters are actually a little bit too small for it so we'll see how big these broccoli plants actually can get but I'm pretty excited to be able to grow broccoli for myself and Peter to eat by the end of the season. Directly over here I actually planted one of the tomato plants directly into the soil to give it a little bit more nutrients to see if it would give it a boost and a leg up over the other ones. I picked the largest one that was thriving just to see if it would like actually push it to go any farther and it looks like he's doing okay. He's settling into the soil. Hopefully he's gonna get nice and big over the coming weeks and start to fruit so I can have some more tomatoes but he's just currently sharing a planter with one of my pepper plants over here. Once he gets big enough I'm probably actually going to have to remove him from this planter and move it to its individual plot which I have hidden on the other side of the balcony just at the moment because it's not in use but he's getting nice and luscious so that is it for my house plant tour i hope you guys enjoyed that and you really got to take in everything that i have as you can see there have been quite a few new additions to the outside balcony i have so many veggies and fruits i'm very excited to be able to harvest to eat for myself i cannot wait to try those strawberries i'm sure they're gonna taste a lot better than store-bought ones because usually i've heard that when you grow them from home they're a lot sweeter since they're not like injected with like hormones and growth things that just make them get like super Big. I don't need a big strawberry. I just need delicious, sweet, fruit, fruit filled tasting ones. Yeah, I think that's the word. I would like to know if you guys had any favorite plants from the ones that I have shown in my collection at home. Please comment down below and let me know which ones are your favorite. Or if you guys have some other plants of your own ones that you think I would like to add to my collection, I would love to know that as well. I always have room in my heart for a couple more new plants. I know Peter's not the biggest fan of it, but shh for me guys and when we have a house one day I can spread them out a little bit more across the house and you won't know that we have that many so you won't know that you guys told me otherwise if you guys want to see more videos like this make sure to give it a big thumbs up just so that I know you guys enjoy these sorts of videos and I'll continue to produce them every season which is once every three months and also make sure to subscribe as well so you guys know when the next time I post a video like this it'll just pop up in your subscription so you don't have to go hunting for it because it doesn't happen quite often but you do get these videos four times a year so you want to make sure you stay tuned and stick around for them so you don't miss them out otherwise if you guys do want to see more of me on a regular daily basis i post on instagram and twitter almost every single day so you guys can check me out right here i've also recently been posting on tiktok quite a bit not every day as i would say like maybe like two to three days yeah i would say once every two to three days but you guys can check me out right here as well and see me make a fool of myself i have also recently made an account for kobe so if you guys like dog content you can check him out here i just think you guys may like some dog content to get to see him more regularly so you guys can watch him make a fool of himself otherwise i hope you guys have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video bye